Welcome to the Sky Magazine coverage of the World Under-23 Ultimate Championships. I'm Liam Grant, accompanied by David Price, Jules Murray, and Andrew Hillman. It's a beautiful sunny day here in London, and this is the final game of the tournament. Uh, we had a thrilling women's final, and hopefully we'll have just the same in the men's division. David. Yep, a uh, couple, uh, couple minutes ago, we had the, me the medals given out to Japan, getting the gold, the USA, in the silver and uh, Canada coming third, USA also bagging the Spirit Prize, which is a great, a great feat for that for that great team. We're just here with the um, introductions for both teams. USA currently in progress. Um, well, the way we'll do this is Liam and I will do play-by-play -play, uh, when the game is on, and Jules and Andrew will give their expert opinion on the uh, uh, with some colour in between points. Jules? Hi, yeah, this is, is going to be a, a really interesting game. Both Andrew and I think it's going to go the state's way by about four or five points. Um, just simply from what we've seen of them this week, obviously as GB when we played them, we'd like to think that we're the team that will get the most amount of points off them. But uh, I'm sure Canada are going to give it a go. Hillman, anything to say? Um, it's going to be an interesting game. Um, had a delay to the start of the start of the game, which will have had a little impact on both teams warming up. Um, it's also going to be the first time for Canada playing in, in front of the really big crowds this week, whereas the US had the opening ceremony game and then also a big semi yesterday against GB, which was very well supported. We'll see if that has a difference. I think starting well for Canada is really important. Get up early, put some pressure on this US team and see how it goes from there. Yeah, I completely agree with that. I think, um, well, obviously it's the North American style of ultimate, so it's going to be big no matter what. Um, but I think here it's a case of st stick with your game plan, go big, and then only start to adjust when they take things away, rather than preempting them taking stuff away and, uh, and, and thinking about compensating too early in the match. This is a rematch of the 2013 Under-23 World Championship Final. Um, that game went the States way in the end, Canada sticking with them early on, but Canada's game was really reliant on a couple of key players. Kevin Underhill on the disc was fantastic all week, and then the US put fiery, aggressive defenders on him, put him under pressure, forced him off the disc, and Isaiah Masekele, they took out the deep game from him. And the problem there for Canada was that they weren't used to working out other ways to score goals. Here, they're going to want to use Gagan Chapman, number 10, as much as they possibly can. They want to use him because he's by far their best player. An incredible 19 assists and 16 goals. And also handler Peter Yu, number 24, who's been really instrumental in moving the disc for them so far. But the key thing will be, if the US can take those players out of the game, who steps up in the really important moments and keeps this Canada offense moving nicely? Yeah, you can see uh, Canada number one there, William Vu. Who, um, who, who definitely, in the game against Japan, started to step up. Um, Peter Yu had been on for point after point after point, uh, showing his athleticism as a player. Um, but then when, you know, when he was getting a bit tired and not free, uh, William stepped in. So, I mean, this is something that, for those of you that are sort of slightly more disc or uh, quite geeky, as we like to say it, um, it's a case of stat sheets, maybe don't always tell the whole story. And uh, the key players that maybe do the assist of the assist, or they change the momentum of the disc, they're maybe not showing up so much on the stat sheets. But actually, they're the ones that kind of the, the pivot point of a team, and if you can shut them down, then you stop those other players doing the big things that they want to do to, to get that goal in the in the end zone. And in many ways, this is a, a challenge of talent versus um, real experience together. These Canadian players were played in little clusters together around Vancouver, um, around Toronto with their club teams and their, their um, professional teams. Whereas this USA team came together at the end of the US Open last week. They went for a one week training camp in Chicago and then they hopped straight onto the plane and straight to London. So they've had two weeks really condensed playing together. But before that, 
they didn't have any experience together and it's been a really interesting experience to see them develop bringing so many big names who are used to being big players for their college and club teams coming together to form a cohesive unit. We saw at the World Junior Championships last year, the Canadians upsetting US in the final. Darren Wu being the star of the show there, so showing it can be done. America are not infallible. And we saw in the women's division just moments ago, Japan taking down the US. So I think it's uh, William Wu and Peter Yu who really need to run the show and show that uh, the US are beatable. The atmosphere right now is electric here in London. Beautiful sunny day. Unlike earlier on in the week, the greatest day of weather we've seen. The sun is splitting the rocks, David. Yeah, it's beautiful out here. And we're, and we're uh, waiting for a, a great game between these two nations. The Americans have a really balanced roster, David. You see on the stat sheet, just nicely spread out, really using the whole team. The Canadians, not so much, and that could be the real difference between the two teams. Yeah, well, a lot of these names we know from the college game, as well as the, as well as the clubs like Temper and others. Like Andy says, they've only been playing together as a unit for a couple of weeks, but they've very much uh, developed on the field here. Quite a lot of Pittsburgh players in this U.S. roster that are really dominating. Trent Dillon with the most scores. Marcus Rainey dropped Chow in there as well. You've seen those lads taking the line together. We've also seen Dalton Smith running the offense for the U.S. Easy to identify with his white leggings. A ginger man as well. Hat on, sun cream, ready to go. Stadium here is entirely packed out. Table, uh, tickets had sold out about a week before the tournament began. Everyone baited breaths for this open final here in the world under 23 Ultimate Championships here in, uh, here in London. Big shout out to Mike Palmer, who's been running the video production all week. Anthony Wilson as well on camera. Both those lads working every single game here. We've done a momentous amount of footage. It's been fantastic. Thanks very much to the World Flying Disc Federation as well for making this happen. Great work put in by everyone here in London. The Canadians looking a bit moosey there, David. Throwing their hands at the American team. <laughs> Getting the banter going already. Yeah, it's a celebration we've seen all week trying to get in the minds of the opposition. Still not entirely sure who's starting on what. There's no disc on pitch yet. Oh, here we go. It looks like uh, Canada starting on D. This first line for the US. We see Max Torn, Dalton Smith, Kevin Brown, Christian Johnson, Abe Coffin, Zane Rankin. I can almost see the last man up against his number. Unusual seeing Abe Coffin on O. He's been dominating the defense here. This goes up. Dalton Smith gathering this one. The number nine lay, setting up in the middle of the field. And it's a bit of his own look, straight off by the Canadians. Interesting choice. Oh, and a D straight away. And Canadians, oh, oh. oh. With the chance to break there, would you believe it, David? It's insane. I, do, I, would, I didn't even see the turn, but they, they 
took a shot straight away, not able to reel it in. Laying the disc. The Canadian's using his zone. Lay discussing something here. Yeah, there's a call. I imagine there would have been a little bump there. Didn't quite see it. The two players already getting a pretty long discussion. Robert Lay given the role of commanding this US offense. US choosing to really spread the field here against the zone. And you can see here the, uh, the advisor, Dan Godbold, getting involved. Lay now with a disc in hand. Oh, tasty around there to Dalton Smith. Looks for the give go. Now I think the Canadians transition to man. Lay jacks it deep straight away. Number 11 getting huge. Jack Williams. Oh, putting on a the plate then for Jack. This man is unstoppable. So um, that's really interesting. Um, both Hillman and I were surprised to see Canada come out with a zone straight away. Um, clearly the states were maybe not expecting it. And in a big uh, moment like this, where you just want to run your legs, get into a game, perhaps it's, uh, that was the right choice. Possibly, it's a bit of a uh, kind of um, sizing each other up there. You know, Canada coming out zone saying, we're not going to let you settle into the game. And USA responding with that big Bobby Lay huck saying, we're going to settle in whether you let us or not. And Jack Williams with a fantastic read We've seen those huts going downwind. We've seen players trying to attack them and them going sailing over their heads all game. Um, but he got that one absolutely perfect. And what a great start for the US. Yeah, fantastic goal there for the US. 1-0. USA able to just about hold on to their offense. Yeah, spicy stuff, David, starting off this uh, game. So Canada now on offense. The claws of Chatha are out with Peter Yu commanding from the back. As it now on the disc, straight to Chatha. On that, oh, and a lovely little springing step there. Peter Yu gets it around to him. Chatha going deep. Goes over to Gaul, another big player for Canada. And straight away, we're going deep. Nicely kept up by 97, Edward Guo. Guo on the, oh, and a nice inside, inside break there. Hugh Knapp with the goal. Calm and collected Canada, punching one in, one all. Rainy drops out there, giving it a difficult task of matching up against Chada. That's gonna be a big one all day. So, Canada responding in kind. We've had a big play from the States, and Canada have gone, okay, if that's the way the game's gonna go, we can do it too. Um, we've said that earlier on in the day, it was a little bit gusty, making this a little bit of an upwind, downwind pitch. So, States would have been on, going downwind, as you see them now, and then Canada on the upwind, but it's completely died, which is gonna open up both sides of the field. Um, and I think that's where it's important to recognize just the danger that both of these teams have in, in sort of the expansiveness that they can play with on deeps, uh, as well as out to the sides and keeping that disc moving. Do you reckon another zone here, Hillman? I think so, yeah. Um, the zone worked fantastically for Canada against Japan in the semi. It's really aggressive. They like to get that little middle guy in the zone playing really aggressive hard man. So you can't get these little pop passes. They're making you make big throws to try and get it get through it. Yeah, I think that's a good call by the Canadians. A lot of really strong athletes on this US team, but not that many well-known throwers. So putting his own really makes them use the throws and kind of kills their athleticism a bit. Centering to Dalton Smith now. Looking for Johnson and we see a different kind of zone look now. Smith slicing through it. Johnson to Kasher. To Schmidt again. Xavier swinging a disc. Johnson tasty little backhand there. Looking for the end zone. He puts it up. Brown takes it down. Smooth and silky from the US team. 
So that was interesting to see. Um, Canada looked a little bit hesitant on the defense there. Um, the States just kind of running into the spaces that they wanted and catching the disc where they wanted. And if Canada are going to stay in this and, and run with the States, you'll need to see them to start to predict the play a bit better and stay much tighter and pressure every single catch. Zane Rankin picking up the disc. A new member on Seattle Sockeye. Looks like he's going to pull this one. Trent Dillon on the line as well. Let's see what defense the U.S. can come up with now. Crowd here, a bit quiet now. I'm sure who to support, I guess, but we have a lot of American fans around us. And I'm sure the Canadians have a, a large proportion in support as well. I think that's Lay with the pull. No, sorry, Zane Rankin with the pull. Centers to PTU. Isolating Nap there on the on the front of the stack. Nap goes deep to guess who? Chatha. Oh, a fantastic grab. The claws of Chatha gripping the disc above two USA defenders. Unbelievable, David. Come at the man, come at the hour. Huge grab by Chatha. He'll be doing that all day. Absolutely unbelievable over Stanley Peterson, over Hunter Taylor. This man is huge in the air, towering over everybody. Yeah, and he also, what's great about him is he's got fantastic throws as well. So it's kind of you're trying to limit the damage as to what he can do. Is he more lethal under the disc or is he more lethal with the disc? Um, and that's where the States maybe need to just uh, respect him as a player a little bit more and not be so casual about it. That almost looked like a bit of a 1-2-3-1 play from Canada. Um, sort of picking up the disc, passing it to the next player, and then just hucking it straight away. And for both teams, it's really important that they find ways of stopping the initial plays. These teams will have set plays. They want to gain big yards off those first few throws. If they can limit that and then they can break them into a little bit more conventional office, that's when they can really tighten up and look to force those turnovers. U.S. on offense now. The pull goes up. This one hanging lovely. Center to lay. A man defense now from the Canadians. A foul upfield. Mark and Bryson applying a lot of pressure to the downfield cutter. Chris LaRock on the disc. Playing for Florida United. Holsters that hook. Lay to Brown. Canadians doing well to contain. Pressure now. Brown in a spot of butter. What's he going to do? Oh, puts it up to Christian Johnson. Own in disguise there. Good play here, Chase Cunningham. Looking point into the end zone. Cheeky little inside flick. Buttery backhand. Back again. Great play. And Silky smooth offense there. The Canadians stretch like spandex on Miami Beach. Oh, and there's a call. I'd say early on in that point, Canada were able to pin America in, but they let the pressure off and America were able to work it down that break side. Yeah, early on, what they were doing was sagging on the open side handler. So if a player was within about 15 yards of disc and standing in the open side, they were ignoring their player sitting in that lane and stopping these big under gainers. It looked like it forced a high still, but once they got a disc out to the break side, there was going to be a player free, and they moved the disc nicely down the field. The U.S. really relying on their athleticism there. Christian Johnson had a stormer at the U.S. Open last week with a revolver. One of the central O-line players. Langdon now at the disc. Looking to pop it in straight away. Oh, he's a high stall and a filthy flick out to the side and a great catch. And he bobs it in straight away to Max Torn. Orgasmic offense there from the U.S. Yeah, they took that time out of the call. 
It did look like they're trying to chump, uh, get it in very quickly, but took the swing. And took the very open option of Max Thorne. Max Thorne, a very good cutter. Very hard to stop downfield. The forever open receiver of Max Thorne. So nippy and quick. Fantastic to watch. So um, we've just had a comment by Hillman, uh, reckon Canada to turn here. Uh, the wind's picked up a little bit. Um, we're sort of saying that so far the teams are scoring in about four to five passes max, basically. Um, and then that's just them kind of eating up the yards of the field really quickly with some great grabs and great throws. Um, I don't know, I'm not so sure. Do you think Canada just might force something a little bit now? Yeah, I think um, the pressure's building a little bit. USA have been kind of comfortable on their own points. Um, it's just that tricky sixth goal of the game. Um, but I could be wrong. So Canada getting onto Nap, and this time isolating you in the in the uh, in the lane. You going down the line to Guo. Guo going deep to get who? Chatha with almost a mirror of the previous sky. Astonishing stuff from Chatha. His biorhythms oscillating at a frequency we just can't understand, David. Yeah, he's a robot, an absolute machine. Three all here in the Open Division final. So now having seen um, each team kind of getting into a rhythm and settling, looking at four or five pass scores, I think the big question is, is something needs to change now because you don't want to let the team find the rhythm. You want to make them rethink something, maybe second guess a throw, slight hesitation. Anytime you're on D, especially at this level, you get one opportunity, one moment to maybe make a change and you've got to take it. So the question is now, what are Canada going to do to kind of make the states second guess themselves and, and just open up that opportunity for a defense? The crowd going wild now as Dalton Smith gathers this one up. Centering into the rock, solid as a rock. Smith dishing it out. Kosher, Smith. Safe as a house, Smith. To Xavier, buttery backhand up the field. Kosher on the disc. Got that Callahan in opening game. Smith smooth and silky here. And a high swing. Xavier, cheeky lefty backhand to Torn, but pick called. We see the game advisors showing their guns there. Xavier Max that with that peppery lefty backhand, loving it all day. Oh, and tasty inside break. Perfection from the US team. A really incredibly impressive throw there from Xavier Matsta, number 80 for USA. It was interesting, added to the squad late after some dropouts by um, previously selected players. Um, and then there was a lot of interest in where they would play him coming here. Big thrower for UNCW Wilmington in the college season. Um, wondering whether he would be put on the O-line or whether they'd use him as a big D-line deep thrower. Um, but you can see when he's so creative and also he's such a big body as a handler cut, that means that those maybe smaller, quicker stepped players that you'd like to put on your handlers, he's going to be able to outmatch them. And he makes, means that he's a really difficult challenge for the de defense. So here, now, let's see if the states have something different to offer rather than just man, maybe a different force of some sort. USA with the pole. Centering to nap. Trying to stop the trying to stop the hug here. Potentially going straight up. Peter Yu towing the line. And the great grab goes inside and oh crawl gets high. But a pick has been uh, something sorry, another pick. Something has been called back with you. The play, other players don't seem to have seen it. Kunsa suggesting that he may have traveled. This game is lively as a cheerleader on a trampoline, David. So much action, much more like a 
a mature US team here. I don't seem to think I've seen any cheerleaders on trampolines, but I'm sure it's an interesting sight. PTU now bringing it back in. Kunsa still doesn't think he's uh, in the right place, but you on the disc. Fakes the inside break. Goes again, goes high. Oh, oh, number 17, Ian McKenzie, thinks he got there first. Wasn't very happy with the American holding onto the disc. Nathan Hurst with the biggest swag there, ripping it out of his American counterpart's hand, saying, that's my disc, and you can't have it. Yeah, seems to have been amicably agreed. McKenzie. To Lamb. Lamb to Knapp. Knapp looks off Gruel. Ooh, but gets it to right. He eventually gets it to Gruel on the, on the near sideline. Knapp on the reset. Straight away to Guo. Gruel to Chatha. Guo goes around. And a pick. Right was uh, entirely free. Oh, and fakes the scuba. Right. Goes high and around to Chatha, who throws the greatest, but no one there. 77 almost had a chance at that. Hugh Knapp, and here we have a chance for USA. He's going to call a time. I believe Kunza is going to call a timeout. Good call there by Kunza. Not too many break opportunities in this game. Wants to sell his US team and uh, have a great shot at this now. So here we go. This is the, the, the difference that we're looking at. And I wouldn't be surprised if Canada either come out in some type of zone or maybe a line trap sort of situation for one or two. Um, probably not bothered if the disc goes backwards, but definitely not down the line for any big throws because the states are going to be fearless. They've gotten the block. There's nothing to lose. They don't need to work it up. What they need to do is just back their receivers, put up something big, take the shots on because, you know, a lucky break here would, uh, would really kind of change the momentum of the game. You see the coach there sort of actively kind of showing an aggressive cut deep and if you're not free you've got to come under i'd love to know what he was saying to those players in that situation um they definitely want to keep the space deep and not go too far as there is a slight wind so anything going that way is is going to hang a bit so you want to keep the amount of players that can pile under the disc down um so yeah so it looks a little bit like canada's going man um, but they might just leave someone slightly deep. Make sure to, if you want to get in contact with us, use Twitter with David underscore Price or at the show game. There's some wonderful puns coming out of the likes of uh, Sam Bowen, who's on, our, who's on our Twitter. Things like the status quo is restored. I'm definitely going to be using that one in a, in a bit. So, America... Kunza on the disc. Trent Dillon speeding away there. Looking for the hammer now. Yeah, and he sends it across field. McAllister under this. Sending me the perfect throw there. And it's ripped deep to Stanley Peterson. Acres of space. A flash of inspiration there by Zane Rankin. Beautiful stuff. Um. Beautiful play by the U.S. Kind of predictable. <laughs> Get it to the other side and then just send it. And they even had two there. Um, number 16 for the U.S. was under it as well. Uh, Trent Dillon. Um, they, they knew it was coming. They knew what was going to happen. And um, that huge hammer. We had it earlier in the women's game. Just saying that having that in your uh, in your locker to bring out to really open up a game put the defense on the back foot and uh, and open up the field is fantastic and if you're either an experienced frisbee player or up and coming and you don't have one 
The big question is now is why don't you have one yet? Sugar-coated hammer there to get the first break for the U.S. team. I don't think there'll be many breaks in this game. Travis Carpenter here at the pull, the D-line expert. Knapp sent us to you. He was a deep shot. You saw a little nod there. Didn't quite get, get what he was given. Get what he wanted, sorry. Knapp in the middle to, to 45. Who gets the second mid there. That's Malcolm Bryson gives it to, gives it to Chatha, who puts it deep to Malcolm. Oh, he reels it in. Not quite in the end zone, though. Fakes to Gruel. Isolated on the front of the end zone there. Takes on the knife and the high mismatch of Gruel. Perfect option in the end. 5-4, USA. Sweet as a nut from Canada. Just putting it up when they're in trouble. Trusting their receivers and taking it down at will. And we're seeing the difficulty that USA have trying to contain Chatter. If they push him under as they did there, they had dropped Joe on him. He's going to come under and he's going to throw big. So what was a, an early break has now been nullified. Um, and it's 5-4 to USA versus Canada here at the World Under-23 Ultimate Championships in St. Albans, United Kingdom. Um, doing the color on the commentary is Jules Murray and Andrew Hillman, one of the GB under 23 open lads. And uh, doing the play by play is uh, Liam and David. Thank you very much, Jules. We've had a, a request for a shout out here from a, a team in London called Flump. So they're enjoying the coverage uh, with Sky Magazine and myself and Mike Palmer, the tent guy, with awesome replays. Enjoying the screening there at home. Keep tuned in, guys. This game's hotting up already. I like how Mike Palmer is referred to as the tent guy. Let's call him the executive video production manager. Coughing under this one. Backed up in a corner. The crowd getting excited. And a call here. William Vu there on the mark. Fouling the, uh, the American uh, handler. In a difficult position now. US team to Xavier wearing the war paint. Oh, and tries the frosty flick oh. and a great toe in the line. And Brown calling the field, jacking it deep. It's going to come back. Max Torn <laughs> celebrating, unaware of the call long ago. So this is just something important to say to those of you that have just tuned in with the game advisors. When they're showing a call, it is not, this is not observers. They are not saying that this is their judgment. They're simply indicating to the crowd what the players themselves are calling. So it's just letting us know what's being discussed. If they're asked, they will put forward their opinion, but in no way do the players need to listen to them or accept their um, view or opinion on the matter. Twinkle toes from Brown there. A ballerina act to stay in field. The crowd on this sideline sure he was in. I think that's what's going to be judged here. Although I'm not so sure in his fashion sense. Those, uh, those sleeves and leggings are going to be boiling in about 10, minute, 10 15 minutes' time. Should have worn a tutu, David. Brown touching it in and jacking it deep straight away. Torn is in acres of space. Casual as ever. Amazing stuff. Tip my hat there to Brown. Brilliant play. Yeah, and a wonderful cut by Thorne. Had time and space to, to just clap, catch it in. Score, USA. Assist from Evan Brown. Score from Max Thorne. So here, the US have um, maybe a big call to make. We're getting closer and closer to that half. And, uh, and I'd say I wouldn't be surprised if they just brought out something slightly different just to put Canada under a bit more pressure. Uh, to not let them score this upwind point. Um, although it's not, it's not that windy, there's enough to make it a little bit spicy. Um, I'd be interested, interested to know 
what what they're thinking, what they're going to do, where they're going to kind of apply the pressure, let it get to a sideline, and then really kind of punch it in or just uh, make them make the passes. The U.S. offense looking so cool and collective. I don't know where the Canadian team is going to generate a, a break here. The Canadians under a lot more pressure and just relying on their big receivers to get them those goals. Canada just keeping it and stopping it from rolling in. Sent us to Knapp. Knapp wants that deep shot. Oh, there's a call, sorry. There's a call upfield. Looks like a foul. The indication from the advisors is a foul. This back in. Knapp to Chatha. Chatha still a problem for both ends of the field. Gets it to Guo. Guo around to Knapp. Now to right. Under a lot of pressure there from, oh, and a lovely bid. Abe Coffin getting horizontal. The man is a terrier flying around the field. Kunza walking to the disc. He can smell this break. And a frosty flick to Trent Dillon. Unbelievable grab. The captain getting the break for this US team. The USA up now, 7-4. And that's two breaks for the USA. Immaculate stuff there from Trent Dillon. The top scorer for the US team, we're seeing him on the D-line now. Obviously brought on to apply a lot of pressure to this Canadian team. And a timeout called by US. Want to bask in the glory of that break. I think at this point it's interesting to note um, the big different styles in play between this game and the women's game that we've just seen. Um, if you haven't seen it, you should definitely go and see it, USA versus Japan. Um, particularly the Japanese team in that game, they were looking to run the smaller cuts, looking to game with little passes. Um, the US team looking similarly to try and get bigger yards, but when you get into this men's game, you see how both teams are looking to compete one-on-one. -on -one. There are lots and lots of these aggressive matchups, and they're really looking to drive them in deep. And if they don't get the disc, they're going to get them under for as many yards as they possibly can. It's the space that is occupied by the players that are active in the men's game will often be a lot larger than the women's game. Shouts to our sponsors, uh, VC Ultimate and Lookfly, for creating the, the kit we have here and some of the kit around the tournament, including the show game and Flick Ultimates. Uh, also to Discraft, the disc provider for this, this tournament and many around the world. The trademark 175 gram disc. If you want to follow this, uh, follow this uh, tournament, you can check out the Sky Magazine Twitter, the Show Game Twitter, and uh, if you want to contact me personally and get some shout outs, you, can, you want to use the handle at David underscore Price, P R Y C E. Canada now receiving that, this very good pull here from the USA. Hurst, isolated on that near sideline, gets it to Nap. Gruel definitely poached there, you want to, might want to get it out to him. Hurst, around to Chatha. Gone back a bit now, in their own end zone. Eventually gets it to Nap. Back to Chatha. Back to, to, Hurst, uh, to Nap, sorry. And goes deep to Gruel. It's a battle in the air. Gruel unable to come down with it. Well played on D there by number 77, Ben Snell. Great stuff there by Marcus Rainey Dropshaw, pushing Chata under, and Canadians looking stagnant there. Heating it to Gruel, the number two receiver, but I can't take it down over Ben Snell, who got a great body position there. Snell now on the disc. Looking for Rankin upfield. 
Hunter Corbett in the lane as well. Oh, oh. And that flick just a little too feathery for a drop show and handing it right back to the Canadians. Not the best place to be turning over there, giving the Canadians an opportunity to hold on to their offense. And hopefully, and potentially, sorry, breaking that this momentum the Americans have, have gathered. Chatha picking up in on the corner. Centers to Hurst. Not quite centered, actually, just in this first third. Now we've centered to Knapp. Back to Hurst. Goes around, but a pick on Guo. Ooh, almost hitting Trent Dillon there in the head as he threw it back. Hurst picking up. Stall two. The Sin. High release backhand to Guo. Goes for goal. But a pick is called in the stack. Oh no, they've given it, it's fine. It's a goal, it didn't affect the play. Hurst like a Jedi Knight lighting up this game. Flashing high release backhands everywhere. Amazing stuff to watch. Yeah, so, um, so Heldon and I are just having a discussion now about the versatility of the teams. And um, for Hellman, he's kind of thinking that Canada look quite set in their ways, whereas the states seem happy to kind of flow and see what's given to them and happy to take it. Um, both teams, USA, they're doing um, a hard mark, sitting on the back shoulder and forcing the Canadians under because it seems to be that what they want to do is just send out that big throw. Um, which worked, but then obviously the issue with that type of bladey forehand is that unless it's pinpoint, it's going to be a turn. And if you're the cans are O-line now, you're just begging for a break from your D-line. They've had a little bit of trouble these last couple of points. They got a kind of soft goal where they threw a deep shot that wasn't on and got the disc at the end zone line. Their D-line can really help them out at this point in the game, nearing the halftime. That would be huge for Canada. Dalton Smith now. To La Rock. Another zony look now by the Canadians. Great awareness downfield. Hitting Smith. Threading the needle at Johnson. On his call in the field. A reenactment by Smith. Not happy with that one. Having a little giggle to himself, fixing his hat. I think this one's going back. Kishan Johnson bobbling around the middle of the field there. Looking to find any nooks and crannies he can. Game advisor coming in. Just to give an opinion. The crowd, crowd. cheering for some Japanese women there. They're very embarrassed. Oh no, she's dropped her back. <laughs> oh, the poor girls, they're very embarrassed there. They shouldn't be embarrassed, they should be proud. Definitely. Am amazing performance earlier. And it's back with Smith. <laughs> Goes for the same pass again. Oh, oh! And a bit of a blunder there by Xavier. Probably moving a bit too quickly. Canada oh, faking that deep shot, deep threat. Gets it to Peter. Oh, Peter! Oh. Oh, almost held on to it, Peter Yu. Two, three attempts at it. Swatting at that one like a fly. Just couldn't get onto it. Smith now. They got lucky there. Kusher. Buttery backhanded Johnson. Chasing it down. Big hammer across the field. That is sugar crowded to Kevin Brown. Easy as. So I think here is where you're seeing with the states, although they haven't had a lot of time together, they have a really good understanding about what good ultimate is and the basics done well under pressure. Um, it's, I mean, I, I know it looks great and everything else, but the reason why it does is because they're giving space around the disc. They're always heads up. They're looking for each other. The throws are solid right into the chest. Um, and, and when you have that, when you've got all those skills and you're really confident in them and you know how to use them, 
then that's the type of offense you're going to see, which is something that is just going to, it's almost like Tai Chi. She's going to flow around whatever pressure Canada try and apply. So they apply pressure in one place, states flow out from under it, and then just go into the next space that's available. And it's, um, I mean, it's kind of annoying to watch because you just wish you could do it yourself. But um, this is where definitely, I don't know, I think Canada are going to struggle. Another from the US. Looks like it's going to go out. The Canadians using the Ron Hagdell's hand signal for a brick there, clapping above their heads. They just need to hold a hand above their head. No clapping required. 33 right centers it. I've got a few minutes to go through here, but we'll start with Hugh Patterson, who's saying, Go USA. How significant are those breaks now? 7 4. I think he's uh, supporting the USA there. Wright gets it off the center, but there's a foul there on the mark. Number 45, Malcolm Bryson, who I'm told goes by the uh, professional video game player tag, Icy Fresh. So we'll keep calling him that. Hugh Knapp across to Icy Fresh. Middles it to Guo, gets that in the basket. Guo, back to right. To Grohl. Goes deep to no one. And uh, a pick is called, but the continuation in that is a turn. Thanks to uh, Kevin Underhill and Joel's uh, reference about Malcolm Bryson an icy fresh gamer so frosty still discussing this on the field advice has been called for their advice of course I think that picture San David it seemed like Hurst slammed on the brakes before the throw went up here in the call but Gruel definitely, definitely hugged it to, to basically to no one. But it looks like it's coming back. Logan Pruse sandering over that disc. No one else wants to get it. Some discussion going up here in the commentary box as to whether the, uh, the offensive cutter could have actually got to that disc at all, even if he hadn't been picked. But regardless, the players have agreed for it to come back to Gruel. Discs back in. Guo gets it to, to Guo. Guo to Chatha. The claw playing much more of a, 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 an upfield handler position. Gruel on the corner of the end zone. Swings to right. Right. Goes all the way around to Guo under a lot of pressure. Late bid there. A very late bid. By 25, Jeremy Langdon. A great tackle if you're playing American football, but not a good play if you're playing ultimate. Guo holding his hands out, unsure what's going on. Taking a little squat for now. Langdon needs to chill the beans here. Can't be doing that on this kind of field. So, a violation. Getting a bit chippy here this game. A lot of pick calls. Eventually Guo getting it to... Ooh, and can he toe the line? Yes! Looks like he's in. Kunsa asking for some opinion. The crowd goes quiet. Nobody entirely sure. Waiting for a call in the field. And it's called out. A game of centimeters. Kunsa jogging up with a disc. On the corner of his own end zone. Drop Chow, boosting up the line. Oh, and an absolutely delicious inside break there. Hunter Taylor in the disc now. 
Hunter the muscle car tailor, this man built like a Mustang. Taylor now to Kunza. The deep options there. He sends it. This one played a little. Landon getting up and dishing it out to Stanley Peterson. Magnificent from this US team. Dominating over Canada. And I think that's half time, David. Yes, it's 9-5 uh, now. That's half time. Canada four points behind. USA taking exactly what the Canadians are giving them. Couple turns. And Canada, uh, sorry, USA taking advantage straight away. And USA take half. Let's get some analysis now from, uh, from Jules Murray and Andrew Hillman on this first half. So it's been um, a really strong half for the United States. They'll be delighted with how it's going. Canada, um, a combination really, they haven't been able to go to their big players as much as they would like. I think that that's been their difficulty. And then they haven't been able to adapt and work out other ways to score. USA have been happy just sticking with really hard man D and forcing these errors. We've seen turns on high release break throws. We've seen turns on swings. And it's proven really difficult for Canada to just keep making enough passes to score a goal. They're going to be having to look for a way to clean up that offense, but also they need to work out how they're going to turn over what has been a really calm and mostly very, very safe United States offense so far. Yeah, I mean, here, um, something we've noticed just about the States in general is they, they always seem really calm even and their defense is like it's almost like they they don't need to get that aggressive with it they just understand what good defense is so they're constantly adjusting their position um trusting their force as much as they can applying the pressure not biting on the break side not biting on the under forcing canada in towards the disc um, and to play a game that they they don't look comfortable playing and that's really important i think maybe there were a few years ago when People believe that good defense involved being a great athlete that worked incredibly hard. I think teams like Japan have demonstrated that there's more to it than that. And you've got to keep your clear head. You've got to be able to think clearly on the field. And we saw one of the Ds for USA earlier where they got a poach with a quick switch. The Canadian player didn't know they were there and they came straight through. You can't get that if you're completely concentrating on your man. You've got to have an awareness of what else is going on around you. Yeah. I, I completely agree, and I'd say um, something that they, they talk about in the States is this idea of um, just always having position, 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 and it's like your player turns their head, you need to readjust. Your player turns their hips, you readjust. They move a foot, you readjust. It's just constantly checking in, checking in with your teammates. Where are they? Where's the danger zones? Where's the disc going? Um, and, it, and it's incredibly like fatiguing, maybe not just physically, but just mentally to, to constantly be checking on yourself all of the time and making sure that you're never out of position. Um, also, you'll notice that if they have been beaten, that they won't just run into the force and, and, and kind of give something that Canada can easily just break through. They're kind of looking over their shoulder, they're checking, they're deciding where they need to come in big um, and then shut down the options, almost a bit like a goalkeeper in football as they come out. Uh, so sorry for those of you over in the, the, the other side of the pond. I know you call it soccer, but it's this idea that you close down the angles as you come in rather than just running in and, and like Hillman said, just being focused on your man. A really key player in that first half for the United States was number eight, Tyler Kunser, who's been picking up the, the disc on the D-line in the last couple of days. Um, really important, getting them off the line, getting them moving early on, and then that last point, he threw that big huck. He's not afraid to take those big shots, and that's really important for the D-line to keep them playing aggressive, keep them playing their game, and it's worked out for them so far. I definitely say I'm jealous. I'm jealous of how comfortable they look 
under this kind of pressure. Um, so to have all the skills and have the game is one thing, but to, to be able to trust in it and believe in yourself and have that confidence, regardless of the circumstances or the situation, um, they just look so natural out there. Like, you know, this is kind of every week that they're in this kind of situation. Um, it's something that I, I know other countries struggle to to create so when we suddenly find ourselves in these situations you know we have to live up to to the the kind of the moment rather than just feeling it and 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 you know being relaxed and confident um so yeah so i think i don't know i, th I think we said at the start we th we just think the states are going to walk it um it would be great to see if canada sort of gets a bit of grit behind them, maybe a little bit of belief and a bit of passion, maybe start to open up and, and use the individual specialty skills that their team probably have rather than limiting themselves to some kind of structure, which kind of makes them all the same type of player. Um, to say, you know, if someone's got quick breaks, then, you know, get them on. If someone's got big ups, throw it to him. If someone's got a, a, a great hammer, let him throw it and start to give uh, give the USA um, something to think about, um, to put them on the back foot and, and not just make this a walk. And it's an interesting challenge now for Canada to work out how they're going to respond. The first half didn't go as they were hoping. But you wonder now with 10 minute, 10 minute half times or a long time, they're incredibly long when you're on the field, you're waiting to go, you'd like to play straight away and you have to wait, you have to think about how you're going to calm down and then you're going to have to build yourself back up to that moment. Kanta here have chosen to just go out and throw. I think it's quite a nice move. It looks like they're not interested in that first half. That's done. We're moving on to the next one. They've got to come out and try different things. We saw in that first half on defense, they tried some sags, they put some zones on early. They're going to have to keep being creative, keep working out where the weaknesses in this USA side are. So then the question is, are the states going to do something different or do you think they're going to stick with their hard man? So we've seen a very small variation of the of the setup from the states but after that they've just been playing hard man from the very beginning i think based on the fact that that's how they did out the start when typically you set to a team i think they're going to trust their players i think it, you can understand why they're going to do it it's possibly the right move it's worked for them so far but when i've got a 9-5 lead i'd like to really keep attacking keep looking for aggressive ways you know that this team are going to feel sure things go wrong early in the second half so let's put the hammer to the nail, as they'd say, mm -hmm. and work out ways that are going to really unsettle this Canadian team. The one thing this Canadian team will be used to is playing against good man defense. Yeah. Um, sorry, just uh, we did have a tweet about it. Um, apologies for using the term states instead of the US or the USA. Um, we hope no one's offended by that. Uh, just put it down to, to plain ignorance. I thought it stood for United States of America and have just shortened it to the term states, but clearly it's uh, slightly unacceptable, so um, apologies for that. Yeah, we've had, a, we've had a bunch of tweets now in this, uh, <coughs> in this half, so we'll get a few, get a few shout-outs now. Uh, I'll have a shout-out to uh, Wiley Coyotes Arlington, Virginia Girls High School. You guys watching over in the US, hope you're enjoying the game. Andrew Rocker, I think you can both agree. We can both agree that this USA team have had this majestical half, magisterial half. My, uh, my bad. And here we've got a sprint on here <laughs> with, I, I believe, actually one of the Indian players in an, in an Australian shirt winning. So, so, so back to the uh, to the to the tweets. Don Lasky, Laxi, sorry, the Filipino photographer, famous worldwide. Thanks very much uh, for watching and enjoying the coverage over in the Philippines. Glad that you're enjoying it. And I have no idea who, Don, uh, who Leon Doritz is, but I don't think he's on the field, so sorry, Nico. And we'll get another shout out now for Catherine Poran, 
Again, reminding me that Malcolm Bryson's nickname is Icy Fresh, as he's a pro video gamer outside of Ultimate. It's a pretty cool fact right there. Looks like uh, half time's over. Both teams now lining up. You can also tweet me, Liam Grant. I'm uh, running the At Sky Magazine Twitter right now. I'm new to the tweeting, but I'll do my best to read it out. You can also get me on Instagram, Instagram13. N nobody yet to send me pictures of uh, buttery biscuits. Still waiting on that one. Also, Snapchat, Granty Puss. US coming down on defense now. Zane Rankin clutching onto that disc. And a really great shower here for the Americans. The Tower Boys, UNC Darkside, twirling from across the pond and watching the stream. Keep watching, fellas. See what happens here in the men's division final here at the World Under 23 Championships. A lot of Florida United players on that line as well. Kunza, Langdon, Lay, LaRock. A lot of temper too. These upcoming club teams uh, have a lot of strength in the under 23 category. But the USA unable to keep their, their pull in and that's a, not, a great, not a great pull there from the USA. Shout out to Rory Kavanagh, who is on Facebook messaging me, keeping up to banter. Mostly saying things to Wana. Goes up. So Nat putting it deep to Chatha. There's two on two. Chatha misreads. Goes very early and not able to bring that one down. A glitch in the matrix there, David. He has been so strong in the air, going up a bit early. Could feel the presence of Stanley Peterson breathing down his neck and can't get that one. Sorry, I've just got to say, I, I think the States pulled that out on purpose. Just putting it out there. Ben Snell now with a disc. Dishing it to Laurel. I haven't seen too much of him. Trent Dillon on the sideline, the captain. Looking deep. Swings it around. Oh! And a wibbly wobbly blunder there from Trent Dillon. Canada with a short field. Right walking up to it. Might see a Swedish. Nope, not quite. Isolating on the front on Guo. And eventually Guo hanging out there for the scuba. But a pick or foul is called. Quick discussion. Looks like they're just going to tap it straight back in. Oh, no, we've had an injury. Ben Snell coming off there. Abe Coffin stepping in. The Canadians now knocking on the door. Oh, and uh, one Canadian choosing oh. to step out to bring in. Bringing in the Peter Yu, the indomitable handler. He resets to right. Oh, a little fake there. Yu with the, that bounce back. But they go around to Chatha, who yet again reels it in for another goal, cleaning up in the stats for Canada. But can, it, can he do enough? The Empire strikes back there. Chatha not going to miss that one in a second chance. A few more stats for the big man. So six, six to nine. Canada trailing by three. Got a couple more shout outs. Just getting through them now. Uh, where are we up to here? A shout out to Mark Doody and his Tatey throws. I have no idea who he is, but nice to hear from Sean Brophy there. Glad you're enjoying the stream here, provided by Sky Magazine. And what, here's one for Andy uh, Hillman here, one of our anal analytics kit guys. Uh, shout out for Warwick Bears, Michael Watts, enjoying the coverage as well. That's where uh, Andy learned how to play.
<laughs> Duress on offense now. A knifey pull from the Canadians. Abe Coffin sweeps it up. The solid handling of Dalton Smith now. Fager in the hammer. Oh, and then he sends it. Oh, oh. and just over the head of Chase Cunningham. That looks so tasty right there. They couldn't quite reel it in. We see the stand get a little bit louder. They realize this is a great opportunity for the Canadians to break. Merrin picking up. First time I've had to say his name today. Peter Yu going break. Merrin didn't like what he sees, but takes on Yu instead. Vu instead, sorry. Gets it to Yu. Straight back to Vu. Vu with that, with that very uh, typical high release lefty backhand, but this goes in and out of Fred Lamb's hands. Heartbreaking stuff for Fred Lamb there. He knows that was a great opportunity. 18, picking it up to Christian Johnson, having a fantastic game. 18, LaRock again to Smith. Oh, his eyes for the breaks. Looking for the give-go, Smith lay now. Everyone confident in handling, puts it out into space and easily reeled in. USA making it look easy after a couple of turns. 10-6 to USA. Something you'll see um, from both of these teams is regardless of, of what happens if on a turn is they immediately are attacking or defending and there's no kind of moment to feel sorry for yourself or let your head go down. You've got a job to do and it's not over until the, the point's finished. So for any, um, any young players out there that kind of are used to when something goes wrong, kind of letting everyone know exactly how upset they are about it. What you're seeing here is total professionalism, um, players understanding the importance of just every second when you're out there. And even though the disc is on the ground, the game is still in play. And uh, that's usually when your man can run away from you or you can just let your head slip a little bit. So yeah, so just good to see. Obviously both teams want it and, uh, and they're willing to stay focused and, and remain on task and not think of, they don't see it as a personal thing. It's a team effort and, uh, and they all get behind each other. Thanks here to uh, Jules Murray and Andrew Hillman providing some great color and tactical advice for both teams. Right to Nap. Nap across to Chatha. Chatha now on that near side line. Gets it round to Nap. Nap to right. Looking a bit tentative here, Canada, but keeping the disc. Oh, and a nice little round break to, to Hurst. He wants the inside, but can't get it out. With nice force from, him, from the USA. Chatham pumping it deep. Oh, and well read and well brought in by I, the IC uh, Malcolm Br Bryson. Gets it to Gruel and goes for that hammer. Oh, and right. Just can't reach it. Twisting and turning in the air there. Like a hairdryer throwing a hot tub. This game is getting electric here, David. Well, some would say that would be suicidal, Liam. A couple more shout outs here. We've got a tweet from uh, Seed Nadi Warner saying, are buttery biscuits cookies or buttered biscuits? I think that's just the difference between a uh, biscuit and cookie. Drop chow now. What a buttery lefty there. Oh, and Chuck Cow sends it deep, and this is Skyball. A lot of lads under it. Everyone's in there. Oh, a Trent Dillon coming down with it. Dishing it back to Travis Carpenter. And looks like there's a call there. Travis the Kid Carpenter. Maybe getting a little bump on the mark. And the kid casually calling a timeout. Good decision. They're outside the send zone. Ready to strike. So we're seeing that Canada are running a lot of different initial plays. We've seen some windmill plays where we have two players clearing out of one side of the pitch and another player moving into it from deep. We've seen some flood plays where everyone stacks on one side and everyone pushes across the other side except one player who cuts back. 
what we're seeing is that they're trying to gain big yardage early. And a couple of points ago, we saw uh, Chatter come under, get faked off even though it was open, and then go deep to try and get the huck. It appears they want to score off these initial plays really early. And when they don't get it, they tend to hold it for a while, run out of ideas, and then they seem to be throwing too many deep shots to players that are already deep. I think they need to show a bit more patience that their vertical stack is going to get them free on unders when after things break down early on in their possession. Yeah, I think you're completely right. And I think as well there, it just might be this classic um, relying on maybe too many, the, the same people to do the stuff all the time without allowing the other players to to get kind of experience and get comfortable at this tournament and show the, the rest of the team what they can bring to the table. Um, so then when the moment comes and those big players are marked out, what are you left with? Timeout over now. Travis Carpenter on the disc. Chuck Howe in front of the end zone. Chad and marking him up. Two different styles of play there. Put on space for Trent Dillon. Cleans that one up. Oh, and a lovely break. Oh! Oh, just a bit too much on that backhand there, Davey. Yeah, it was a nice option, but it just kind of floated around the player and wasn't quite executed the way he probably wanted. So Canada, given the chance to hold on this one time. And they're not going to get many of those from the, Amer from the Americans. You get it to Chatha, who gets it deep to Guo, who toes it in wonderfully. That's an easy goal and a lovely throw there by Chatha. Well timed, well weighted. 7 10 to USA. Gar Gantuan throw there from Chatha. He's not also good in the air, he can also send it deep. That was absolute perfection. I've had a quick question here. Uh, from Matt McLaughlin. He's asking why this far sideline is empty. That's a good question, Matt. The reason is, is so that anyone in the stands can see, keeping the sideline uh, on the other side free for the players. And having played on the, this pitch um, three times, I think, yeah, three times so far, well, during this tournament, um, it really does add a big different challenge you're not used to. You're used to being able to hear information from both sides. When you're on the sideline playing D, you really are alone, and that means you've got to be a little bit smarter. You can't, you're not going to know if the disc has moved necessarily if you're playing hard man D, so you have to be a bit more conservative. You've got to make sure your body positioning is appropriate for the disc to move to a more dangerous place. So particularly if the disc moves up the line, you've got to be aware that that's a possibility, because if it does, and you still think the disc is way back downfield, you're going to be able to get beaten on a little pop pass that you think would have to be a massive, a massive underthrow. US coming down offense. Lay watching this one. Good pull by the Canadians. Getting high in the stock on Lay. Finally gets that fluffy flick off for the swing. Xavier, who lashes it deep. Brown chasing this down. USA reply with an amazing layout. Unbelievable. Colossal there's a call. Grab. There's a call. There's a call. There's a call on the play back here. Oh, there's a call on the play. Advisor Liam getting involved in here. Bit of a pantomime crowd. A fantastic play on the other end, though, for USA. A bit of discussion going on here. We see Greg Conley on the sideline is there as well. Going to work through a few more shout-outs. Uh, Andrew Rocker saying that some of those players who played for Florida United notched their first big win of, the, of its actual existence with a, with a win against Sockeye last weekend. He's uh, saying that they've got a very big season ahead of them. And a win against the might of Sockeye is a good start. 
And he's going deep again. Deja vu. Can Brown get it? Oh, like a thief in the night coming in there, getting that D. Fred Lamb there, getting position on the inside. Great bit of D. Canada tap it in straight away. Oh, Chatha under pressure from a bid, but sends it to the, to the man who just got the D. Frederick Lamb bookends and a flip for a celebration there from Canada. Deadly, savage, immaculate. This game is so fantastic, David. Layouts all around. Double happiness for Lamb. He'll be delighted with himself. Yeah, so I'm going to just pull it back for a second. I, I feel like this thing about not having a sideline uh, and then needing to play smarter defense. Would you say then, if you were trying to train your team to play intelligent defense, you should train without sideline? and go into tournaments saying no one is allowed to play sideline because you need to learn how to be really heads up. I think you could to a degree, like it would certainly be valuable to play some games without sideline to make you really think about it. But also listening to your sideline is just as difficult. Being able to tune into them takes a lot of practice, a lot of thinking, and it takes some players years before they really work out how to listen to their sideline effectively, be able to listen to the appropriate information just zone out the noise that isn't meant for them and adapt immediately to what they're hearing. So you've got to be able to train to train both. A nice comment there by Andrew Hillman. Something I like to pride myself on is listening to my sideline. And at Fire of London, we have a fantastic sideline, mostly in the voice of uh, Steve, uh, Steve Walton and Stuart Greer. But maybe, yes, maybe I am a less intelligent defender. I wouldn't like to uh, offend my own intelligence there. Thanks, though, Jules. <laughs> LaRock on the disc. Sweet now. Kasher. Firing it deep down with Blady. Oh, and a lot of hands in there. Johnson calling the foul. <laughs> <laughs> telling the crowd to, to calm down. Very exasperated Christian Johnson here. That non-official hand signal waving at the crowd. Yeah, yeah, I think he just wanted to make sure they discuss it properly. And they, yeah, the crowd have their opinion, but... You've got to let the, the players discuss with the player, the player on the field. Advice is only brought in if advice is required. I'm not sure about that one, David. I think it was could have been a clean D. Yeah, I think he, he couldn't have got it either way. And uh, that maybe the contact was after the the missed catch. But we'll let the players discuss. I mean, the perfect perspective is down there on the field. The question we've had here from uh, from Flump Ultimate is why there are crosses in the end zone. These crosses are there to for um, penalties for when uh, pulls are, are offside. Yeah, if you're if the defensive team is offside more than once in the pull, the offensive team can uh, take it from the center field brick mark. Or if the if the offensive team is offside twice, they end up having getting a reverse pick. They're calling it and end up taken in the middle of their end zone. Yeah, this is the first time I've really ever seen markings like that. A big uh, learning curve here at the World Under-23 Ultimate Championships. Chase Cunningham finding Dalton Smith. Oh, and a body back end into the air. The Rock taking it down. Dangerous play here by the US. Oh, Chase Cunningham again. Oh, dishing it out. Nice finish to the point there from Chase Cunningham. So what's really interesting to see there, um, and this is for anyone who's working on practicing on their break throws or um, just getting a bit more space to get their throws out, is something the states do really well, is rather than stepping out to the side to get a throw out, they step 
forwards and through the mark. And what it means is either they step through the mark and get the throw out, or the mark backs off, and then which opens up like an IO type of throw or just gives more space to the open side throw. Um, so for those of you kind of now working on maybe your disc skills a bit more and, and the, the range available to you and how to actually get your discs out in a game when you're under pressure, it's worth remembering that just stepping out side to side is really predictable. It's easy to defend against. And actually what you want to do is start to get aggressive, use your momentum, step forwards and through, and then sort of almost like a clock, practice pivoting around that and throwing from all these different positions. So USA pulling, right, centers to nap. So a pairing I've, said, I've mentioned a lot this week, this weekend. Nap gets it to Chad, who slips, not able to connect. US now, Dylan on the disc. Has had a fantastic game so far. Trying to cram it in the cram hole, but that one doesn't come off. Yeah, Chatham making sure they're just check, pushing it out of the, out of the uh, pitch. Nap jogging up to pick, bring it back in. Quick shout out to Molly Oak, who's, um, who wants to mention Timmy McAllister and the UNC Darkside boys, repping for USA. Here goes Nap. Centers to right. Across to McAllister. Sorry, Hurst. Around to Knapp. Canada really being pushed back here. Lovely break there. There's Malcolm Bryson, the IC pro gamer. Yeah, Chatha with a big fake. Gives it to Guo. Back to Chatha. There's that deep hit by Chatha. Oh, and Chatha lays it out into the goal. Sorry, not Chatha. 23, Fred Lamb. Lovely bid. A lovely grab for the goal. 11 9 to the USA. A flash of inspiration there by Lamb. Yeah, trying to muster up some courage to take on this US team. And for the neutral suspector, I really hope they do. I think the USA can be a little bit smarter on D now. Just because you're in the lead, it can be often tempting to think we'll keep working their O line hard. And if we don't get the turns well, our O line can probably carry us to the end. But at the moment, they're really letting Canada do what they want to do. And we haven't seen Canada do a lot else other than Chatter go deep or he comes under, gets the disc and hucks it. So they can be a little bit clever. I think Rene Dropchow is doing a really good job of containing him. But once he gets the disc, they can have help from the sideline. Those deep players should be having a look, saying, OK, he's coming under, he's about to receive. I'm going to take some steps off my man deep, push him under, prevent them from getting those strikes deep whenever he is on the disc. It's interesting to note here the three different USA coaches, one with the majority of the O-line, one standing with just two players, and then another one with what seems to be the D-line. Um, and this uh, looks like they're discussing certain ideas, maybe some concepts about play and what they bring to the field. Um, it definitely looks to me more like USA are playing more on principles rather than these set play pieces um, and that certain players are brought on the field to bring something that's maybe special to them as a player and, and, and bring those options available. I mean, that's what the USA do really well is just provide options which they then choose to take or not take and, and it never looks like they're sort of forced into just one thing which has been provided to them. Um, but having said that, I think it's important that, um, that maybe they don't let Canada keep running through them like this. Maybe bring out some zones just to make them think a little bit more about what they're doing um, and, and just kind of apply pressure in a, in a slightly different way or even just changing the force to trap out or force middle or something else. Shadow doing really well, assisting last three points. US really shutting him down going deep and he's no problem with that. He grabs onto the rims of redemption and just fires it home. An absolute talisman for this Canadian team. Lay to the rock. The zony look from the Canadians. 
Good pressure there. Christian Johnson just getting free at will. Cunningham. Trying to orchestrate this offense. Xavier to Langdon. Shaping up for the hammer. He still wants it, but it goes with the juicy flick. Langdon again. Really aggressive throwing for the man. That's a goal. A lovely, Tasty stuff. A lovely bid there from the Canadian defender, but not quite close enough. And some nice spirit as well being picked up by both American and Canadian players. The Canadians staying in arm reach here, but the USA still look comfortable. If there was a team of chatters, we'd be saying a different thing. Another shout out here for uh, Oliver Green. He wants a shout out for the Long, Long Hill boys watching the game from Cambridge. Nice to hear some, some guys who are quite local enjoying the game on the stream. And a, a few clouds coming over here now. Potential for a bit of a shower if we don't end soon. But this game so far been in, in some enjoyable sun. Nap on the disc. Playing very well for the Canadians. Gets it over to, to Nathan Hurst. Hurst, back to Nap. These two seeing a lot of the disc. Right, faking. And that finally gets it to Chatha. Again, had a fantastic game here. Now Ben Burrell on the disc, puts it out. And a lovely goal there from Hugh Knapp, from B Ben Burrell, Canada, smoothing out their offense. And very well played there by Canada. Out of this world of that throw, that was an absolute peach. This is how the Canadians need to play if they want to get back into this game. Yeah, I think that's a fair comment. Um, you saw their number 33 for Canada which is, let's have a quick look, Nick Wright um, actually looked off um, Chatha there um, and, uh, and he was looked off earlier as well. It's just uh, maybe Canada's way of saying, you know what, there, there are other players on this team and, and we're good too and we know what we're doing and we don't solely rely on him. And so if the uh, United States wants to put one of their best players on him, then fine, we'll start using other people. Um, and maybe that's what's going to kind of bring them back, back into this game. I'm going to have to give a shout out to Mark Early, the godfather of Irish Ultimate, who got married today. Fair play to him. The Rock to Smith. This 1-3-3 zone out again from the Canadians. Trying to slow down this US offense. Kotcher dishing it to Johnson. Kotcher with a big fake. Layup field. Dalton setting up the vert stack. Lay, not the smoothest back end we've seen. Max Torn to Lay. Cam, collective and critical stuff here from the US. Torn nipping around, hitting Lay. A lot of uh, US players clogging this near side. So he goes for the hammer instead of Torn. Oh, just. Scrapes the rim with his fingernails there. Sorry, I'm uh, getting a bit too 
stuck into uh, people tweeting at me. <clears throat> Canada now back on offense. Oh, oh, and that was a bit of a dangerous play there, I'd say, by Dalton Smith on PTU. He's, he's down now. He look, doesn't look very comfortable. Not a great sight to see, David. Dalton Smith, hungry like a shark there. Maybe a little too hungry for that one. Looks like he's able to sit up now. Hope he's okay. And he's able to get up. Hope, hope he's uh, not injured too badly. Yeah, who's who's going to replace that man? Peter Yu, of course. The claws of Chatha strides on. Been fantastic at throwing as well as getting those incredible grabs for goals. I believe he's assisted a lot of points here as well as, as, as scoring. So Chatha faking deep. Handler now isolated there on the middle of the end zone. Gets it to Lamb. Lamb fakes that again that deep. Gets it to St. Dennis. Had a great game in the semi-final. Now over to 89. Nick Boucher, who boosts it deep to Chatha. But his defender's under him and reads it much better than he does. Stanley Peterson minding the house there. Oh, the great layout! Absolutely stunning. That's number six, Braden G, and a timeout there called by St. Dennis. Yeah, they call so you've got a really interesting point going on at a kind of crucial time in the game. USA O line looking really good, really comfortable in the second half, work it up towards the cone. You think they're going to score, and then they give it away on an aggressive option. And you think Canada have kind of got a chance out of nothing. They give it away, and then they make the play. So now they've really earned this turn and they'll be determined to try and put it in. What we've seen of late is that Canada are really not getting those large undergains at all, despite the fact that Canada are pushing them under, uh, USA are pushing them under, but they're right close on that shoulder and Canada don't want to trust their cutters. They're looking off those throws, resetting, and then looking to hit deep shots. I think eventually they're going to have to hit these unders if they want to get back in this game. Be a little bit braver. So a quick timeout there. St. Dennis standing over the disc. The men in yellow, the advisors, streaming across the pitch now. This is the, the final game here at the World Under-23 Ultimate Championships. Cloud has come over here a little bit, making it look a bit colder on the, in the stands. The wind still blustering left to right on your screen. So St. Dennis taps in, fakes the... The attempt to chatter. Oh, and gets it across the lamb. He picks it up off his toes. Back to St. Dennis. Isolated. Eventually gets that beautiful breakout to Chatha. Oh, and a bit of oh, a bit too floaty there into the end zone. No call. Just a turnover. Kosher think game to know a... is a uh, Canadian counterpart fairly well then. We'd like him to buy him dinner next time, I'd say. Oh, and there's a call in the field here. I oh, know I think it's been retracted. Being walked up now by Chris Larocque. Solid name. The Rock to Johnson. Putting up for Kosher. A few under this one. Oh, and a huge grab from Kosher. And a fluffy flick for the goal. 
all in the skies there. It looked like the Canadian had, ste had steps, had position, but Kosha just a fantastic grab over the defender. Putting the sky and Sky magazine there. So it's unfortunate for the defender there. Um, when the disc is up, you're always told to locate the man, make sure you get position, and then relocate the disc. The problem there was that I think he expected the disc to hang in the air for a little bit longer. So he's found his man, he's got position, and then he's about to go and look for the disc. And unfortunately, Kosha's already there to take it from over his head. They are the big plays that really count in this sort of game. The 50-50 ones. Ooh. I don't know whether the advisors or the players have called this, but a spirit timeout has been called. Uh, Liam, any, any suggestions here? Important to note that the clock will actually stop during a spirit timeout. Correct. So the Canadians aren't running out of time here. What will happen here is, is that uh, the teams will, will group together and the spirit captains will be brought out to discuss. I have no idea what for. Maybe there's been a few chippy calls. I think it's to do with the body contact, mostly, David. There's been a lot of bid, bids in. I don't think anyone intends you trying to bump or hurt, but maybe the lads just, the occasion getting to them and just diving around and maybe not respecting their opponents better and the, the danger they're causing them. Well, whilst we've got a short break, we'll get, a few, get through a few more tweets I'm receiving here. Tony Leonardo, the, the author of uh, Ultimate Fame, has uh, said, keep up the good work, fellas, and Jules. It's pretty tasty despite the occasional glitch in the Matrix. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> Clockwork Ultimate and Lady Clockwork of Princeton. Glad to see you're enjoying the stream. Uh, and, a, and a very somber shout out to uh, Emanuela, who was a volunteer playing in the volunteers game a couple of days ago. Hurt her knee very badly and had to leave for crutches. I hope you're feeling better uh, and get, get back out there soon, Emanuela. The Canadian flag being run across the sidelines. But the real drama is taking place on the field with this spirit circle being uh, run by the game advisors. I don't know how really necessary this was. So the teams now coming together, shaking hands, trying to relieve the, the pressure of the spirit. With spirit, sorry. The Danes egging on the US and Canada teams to kiss and make up. And now shouting make out. Both Canadians and US players smiling in a spirit circle anyway. Spirit captains have been called out to game advisors. Okay, Greg Conley leading discussion there, the man who came up with the game advisor system. The head honcho not happy with what he's seen so far. He knows this is a, a showcase of our game. Lots of people tune in from all around the world. Everyone on the field an ambassador for our sport. And we want them playing it the right way. Apologies, folks, if I don't get your shout out. We're getting many uh, requests here. But we're definitely enjoying this game and uh, having a bit of everything. Good plays. And now, now even a spirit timeout. The score here, 13-10 to the USA against Canada in the Open Division Final here at World Under-23 Championships held here in London. It's been a very uh, long week here, but we've enjoyed it thoroughly. Myself, Liam Grant, Jules Murray, Andrew Hillman, Ben Rees, Tom Stiles, with the commentary of Sky Magazine. So Canada now receiving the pull, fielded to nap.
Knapp. Inside, back to Knapp. Gets it through to Guo. Guo to Chatha. Chatha with a, with a bit of a double team going on, but gets the high release flick out to right. To Knapp. Gets in the, gets in the knife through to McAllister. To right. Now we're back in man after that. Sort of start his only look to Nap around to uh, I think that's Guo or or Lam. Oh, no. Nap able to reel it in to 45. Malcolm Bryson, the pro video gamer, hits the cheat button and gets a goal. Enter in your initial scones. You just got the high score there. A bit lucky from the Canadians. And this going up there, with an American player able to make a bid, but just didn't know what was behind him. That's 13-11. USA up two here in this final game of the Open Division. The Canadians playing a lot spicier game. I'm surprised the US aren't maybe a bit more out ahead. Quick shout out to Potsdam in Germany. They're watching this game with a barbecue. Glad you're enjoying it with some food. Getting a bit peckish up here myself. But uh, we'll get some food after the game. Can't really leave it. It's a thrilling game so far. Free uh, buttery biscuits for everyone here in the grandstand. I've been promised. But for now, the sweet taste of ultimate. And this is a cracking game we have. Canada pulling to the US. Dalton's serving this one, having to catch it. Puts it up in the air. Oh, lucky ducky. Swinging again, LaRock on the disc. Oh, what a beautiful break there by LaRock. And there's a call in the field. A Canadian going down, can't see who it is. Clutching his shoulder. Yeah. Uh, it's Braden G who went down there for Canada. Braden G, as we'd say in Ireland. It appears to be okay, he's got, he's got back up on his feet. Dryden never going to give you up there. The Americans marching forward here. Xavier. The Rock. Up to field, Xavier had to throw field, no dumps set up for him. Dalton Smith bouncing around there, great switching by the Canadians. Brown had to come in and rescue today. Dishing it to Dalton, pick called. Dalton Smith loves adjusting his hat. Ooh, a spot of butter, puts it towards the end zone. Chase Cunningham chasing that one down. A tough call. Chase saying he doesn't really know where he was, looking for advice. The advisors discussing there quickly. And Dan Godbold approaching the players to discuss the, the call. And they've given it as a goal. Some of the crowd disagree with this call. No action replays for us here in the grandstand. Maybe you at home can tweet us to tell us was it in or out. The Americans are almost surprised about that one, David. Yeah, I think a lot of people here are a bit surprised that was given as a goal, but the advisors having a very good bit of perspective there. And potentially even Kevin LeClaire, I can see down there, had a good picture of it if they wanted that opinion.
quick shout out to the South African Wild Dogs, playing a fantastic uh, game in the mixed division. They were able to start last and finish sixth in their last game against GB. I hope you guys have enjoyed the coverage in South Africa. We've been working hard to make sure you, uh, you get the information you need. So cheers, guys, and uh, hope you have a safe trip home as well, Wild Dogs. the pull perfect he's touched that so that goes from the back that's really unfortunate they're gonna have to work their way from the back of the end zone now right stuck on the back of his end zone and a zone being played by the USA you can hear the noise from the sideline and from the stadium right on the disc Nick Wright with a hammer to get out of jail Gets it to 73, gets it across to Guo. Guo to McAllister. McAllister to Chatha. Chatha brings it down. They've come all the way from the back of the end zone now. This is some great play by Canada. Chatha goes around to, to, uh, to Knapp. Knapp. Ooh. Knapp to Burrell. Now to Wright. Sorry, Hurst. Apologies for getting that name wrong. That's Hurst now. Oh, and a floaty flick. It's the break side, but a pick is called. Actually, very good that he made sure. If that had turned over, there's a potential for that to remain a turnover, depending on when the pick was called. Yeah, I think that one was before the troll, but always good to practice it anyway. Just back in with Hurst. Doesn't like the reset. Oh! And that's a very typical problem with, with dumb resets. You've got to be stationary before you make the next cut. Abe Coffin to Laurel. Swinging it out. Number 10, Logan. Laurel to Rankin. Silky smooth again from the US team. Laurel gets that disc out of his hands so fast. Breaking at will, the Americans. Call. Let's say a little foul on the mark, uncontested. Guo there, fouling on the mark, but uncontested, as Liam says. Back in on, uh, on zero. Oh, a sneaky throw there to trick Dylan. That one looked too easy for the US team. Yeah, there's a nice goal there. Very smooth. Score All the way down this far sideline, then swinging across, punching punch punch into Russia. that, that near corner. 15-11. USA, I can't quite see the scoreboard, but I believe that's the right score. USA lead 15-11. Yeah, 15-11. So at this point in the game, you're, you're what we call at the business end of the game. Um, it's where, you know, you need to keep your focus, not rush things, trust your systems, not play it safe, like still do everything that you've been doing, but just uh, maybe take a second a bit more. You'll see a lot more fakes coming out to, to move the thrower, uh, to move the defenders around um, and just like the states still look really relaxed they're working so hard on d and then on offense they're just kind of running with it and flowing um and uh i think canada i don't know i can see them wanting to try and get a goal in nice and early a lovely pull there by usa canada center to nap ptu one of their central handlers gets it to Chatha, who goes deep. And a lovely sh shot there, but the USA defender catches up. Oh! And he gave him a leapfrog there. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was Brandon G, just uh, unable to control his body a little bit, went over the top. Quite comical, and both players finding that ac acceptable. Drop shot number 42. Is he the answer to the universe and everything? 
Sneaking in a bit, Douglas Adams there late in the game. And a timeout called. Stall six. Current score is 15-11 uh, USA. Crowd are quite quiet here, but enjoying the game. Shout out for uh, VC, Lookfly Ultimate, and Discraft, our providers here of, of discs and kit. Okay, so the bets are on. I think Canada might do some poachy type of zone thing. Hillman thinks. I think they'll play man. I think when you get to this point where they're now down by four, if USA score here, they're down by five, you're already thinking ahead about how you're going to win this game. And I think they've got to work out what they're going to do to create turns against this US team. And I think they're not going to believe that they can get a zone to turn the US five possessions in a row. So I think they're going to come out hard man and they're going to hope that they can break this US team. It doesn't look likely, but I think it's what they'll believe in more. And what type of force? Would you change the force now, go straight up, or keep it the same? I would go straight up, personally, in this situation. I think I'd want to get them spreading it towards the sidelines. There's not a lot of wind, but if you can get them making long throws that aren't gaining them a lot of yards, that's going to be beneficial. In this game, US IOs have been really, really dangerous. They've been allowing them to gain yards into that break side with nice continuations without really having to beat their players into the open side. Drop Joe coming in with the disc. Canadians, a bit of a clam look. Good movement by Drop Chow and is a call in the field again. Uh, Twitter exploding here, telling us that Chase Coneyham was out on that close line call after looking at Mike Palmer's replays. Sadly, I'm about to run out of uh, batteries, so if I don't reply from now on, that'll be uh, my phone is dead. So apologies for that. Pricey, very upset about this, as his <laughs> phone is his life. I wouldn't, go, I wouldn't quite go that far. I would. <laughs> I'm just trying to make sure the fans are involved, Liam. I hope you guys at home are enjoying the stream and this game as much as we are. Hunza. Drop chow. Canadians doing well to shut down a field. Oh, and a hanging disc. No bother for drop chow. McAllister. Bordery backhand there to Peterson. To Kunza. Easy as pie here for the US team. Ooh. Kunza again. To Chuck. The San Jose Spiders. The Americans not trying to jam it up anywhere. High saw count now. Stanley Pearson bails them out. Back to Kunza again. Looking to move that quick give go. Opening up the lane oh. for Hunter Corbett here. Toasting Chatter up the line. Yeah, Chatter putting on hard force. Oh, beautiful faking by Hunter Corbett. And Stanley Pearson with the goal. Chada stumbling with that big fake there. Beautiful stuff by the Californian man. Score USA, the assist from 42, Marcus Reiner and Rocha. And the point. So I think a really kind of big credit and comparison you can give to this US team is that they now look like one of the top club teams in the US. The way they're moving the disc, these little small ball club teams in the US where they look to dish it off nice and quickly, they attack the break side and they work the disc up nice and patiently, nice and calmly. I think it's really impressive considering that this is a group of players that will all have different styles to have come together in two weeks and to be playing such a fluid and patient, calm, relaxed style of offense. Yeah, I agree. And I think, I think again, that just comes down to really understanding the game. And, uh, and understanding how to have different ways of, of doing things. So you're big and expansive, small and quick, um, and, and being able to flow in and out of those two different styles um, as a group and, and knowing each other and, and how you're going to move in that. Score here, 16-11. A big shout out to Eric. Early recognition is critical. 
the charity about recognizing critical illness early by talking about it and involving spirit and ultimate in the same place. And Vu on the disc now gets it to Guo. A lot of pressure here from the USA, but eventually Chatha getting free, fakes that deep option. Goes down the line to, to Vu. Vu takes on that deep shot to Guo. Can he win it in? Oh no! Denied by Trent Dillon. The closing down speed of Trent Dillon, astonishing there. Absolutely insane. Sweet as a nut, Trent Dillon, take a bow. I said by four. So potentially USA with a chance to close the game out. It's currently 16-11. US now on the disc. Put his way down the field. He jacks it to Brown. Chatter chasing. Too far. Brown trying to toe oh, this ball. And that's and the game. Goal for USA in the open division. Flooding the field. Heart break for the Canadians. Chada, not really deserving a home with Silver here, having a fantastic game, but top notch ultimate from the US to take this one home. What a fantastic game by the US. Um, I just think they've shown their class, they've shown the depth in the squad, their understanding of the game, both on offense and defense. Um, and the mental side, all the bits that kind of come together to make a complete player and a complete team. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, the game's definitely gone to the, to the better team and I think the scoreline reflects that. Well done to Canada uh, for showing some good grit and some good plays. There's definitely some super talented players on that team. But uh, I think today, you know, it was, it was US's game and, and they looked like that from the start. Yeah, it might sound a little bit like we've been knocking Canada throughout this game. It's only because we're comparing them to the really high standards the United States have set throughout. Um, incredibly clinical, so, so clinical. Really, really impressive performance. It shows that there are a few nations just behind, just off. But when we look to improve, this is the first place we need to be looking. We need to be working out what these players do so well that we can learn from and we can try and build towards in the future. Some great Island highlights in that game Columbia there. I'm feeling a little sad now. This is Sky Magazine's and last stream of this open. amazing tournament. Things down to wrap up cross. here. David, what has it been like commentating all week? It's been the best of time and the worst of times for me. I feel I've aged a year, although it's been a week. It's been very emotional. We're always losing our voices here at Sky Magazine's coverage of the uh, World Under-23 Ultimate Championships. It's been some, uh, some early, day, early mornings, some late nights, a lot of great points. I'd like to thank Mike Palmer down there in the tent, Jules Murray, some fantastic commentary, Han Andrew Hillman for stepping in this afternoon, Ben Reese, some great job yesterday and today. Um, <laughs> I'll keep going. Liam Grant, my, uh, my friend here. Some great commentary. I'd also like to thank the likes of Cy Hill, Luke Tobiasevich, and the other organizing committee members, as well as my uh, uh, compatriot down at the show game doing a great job with photography and written word. Make sure you check out that website, as well as Sky Magazine, uh, for further coverage of, the, of this tournament. Liam, any final words? Well, I'm out of words at this stage. No more metaphors or similes for quite a while now. The end of the buttery biscuits for us here. Yeah, fantastic stuff from all around. Uh, the best tournament I've seen ever ran. Fair play to the London boys. Spectacular stuff. Emotions all around. The US setting the standard time. here. Please and yeah, I can't, I can't wait for the party now. The time to relax. Sky Magazine jerseys on. Having to laugh. Congratulations to all the champions here. And thank you everyone at home for watching. We'll see you again soon. The next uh, streaming event will probably be EUC in a couple of weeks' time, which Liam actually will be playing in, and I'll be there. Thanks for all the Twitter feedback. I've really enjoyed doing this. Uh, thank you to Sky Magazine. Peace out, world.